As a lot of you know, when I first uh, ran for Congress, it actually was because of trade. Uh, when I saw you know, what uh, these bad trade deals uh, have done uh, to, to workers, I was, remember when I was working at Great Northern Paper Company uh, on the mill floor when Congress uh, uh, passed the NAFTA trade deal. And I can remember my fellow workers uh, you know, just saying that how disappointed they were that the, not only the Democratic Party, but elected officials have let them down. And uh, that is something that uh, I've always uh, uh, kept with me. And what's even more disappointing uh, to me today is the fact to see that our, our president, uh, who has been really pushing uh, TPP uh, and other trade deals in, in fast track uh, as well. And when you look at TPP uh, compared to NAFTA, na uh, you know, NAFTA was small potatoes compared to what we're dealing with uh, today with uh, the TPP. Uh, P. And during my tenure in, in Congress, uh, when I looked at a lot of the trade deals that uh, came up during that time frame, whether it was CAFTA, uh, Panama, uh, uh, Colombia, they're actually built upon the same model that NAFTA was built upon. Uh, and, and that uh, was really uh, discouraging me. Uh, but I also realized that we just can't say no, uh, that we had to find a, a new way of doing things uh, as far as trade rather than just say no and, and leave it be. And that's when I got to work as a member of Congress and actually uh, established the, the House uh, Trade Working Group because I was displeased with uh, the Democratic leadership and the way the committee members were, were dealing with the, uh, the trade deal. And we actually came up uh, with a, uh, uh, the Trade Act. And that actually sets out criteria on how trade deals uh, can be negotiated. And I do want to thank the mayor, uh, the main uh, fair trade uh, campaign for your efforts in that as well. Uh, you have actually been very helpful uh, during that time frame when we actually put in, uh, you know, the Trade Act to really uh, move that uh, forward. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't go anywhere. Uh, but what actually was interesting is uh, last year I spent the bulk of last year actually looking at a fast track replacement. And I remember, I remember some of uh, the House Trade Workers said, well, "Why do you want to do that?" I said, well, because of, uh, you know, I think it's important to lay something out there. And we actually made a lot of progress because what we did, we didn't call it the Trade Act, but a lot of the stuff that actually we had in the Trade Act, we made a lot of progress. Sandy Levin, who was the ranking member of the Ways and Means Committee, actually bought into a lot of the stuff that we had in the, uh, uh, the Trade Act. We just didn't call it the Trade Act, and we did it under... Uh, you know, the different name, uh, but he bought into it where he was adamantly opposed to the, uh, to the Trade Act. So he made a lot of progress. As a matter of fact, the administration was getting uh, extremely worried about it. Uh, and, uh, but uh, Lita Pelosi, I give her a lot of credit. She actually uh, made it very clear to Sandy Levin, even though I wasn't on the uh, Ways and Means Committee, that we were to work together to move forward with some uh, type of uh, a policy uh, dealing with uh, a fast track, and uh, and we made a lot of progress. Unfortunately, it, it didn't go anywhere. Uh, and I feel strongly when you look at uh, members of Congress, we are elected there uh, to represent the people in our districts. The Constitution gives the authority for trade to members of Congress. And as a uh, member of, of, of Congress at my 12 years, I did not feel like giving that duties over to any administration, whether it's a Democratic administration or a Republican administration. As you heard uh, Sharon uh, and others talk uh, this evening, a lot of those trade deals are negotiated uh, in uh, uh, secret. They don't know what's, uh, uh, you don't know what's in them until it's time uh, to vote on them. As a matter of fact, uh, one of the things that uh, I was able to convince uh, two of the USTRs, uh, the current one and the previous one, uh, Mr. Kine, to come visit uh, New Balance facility, because New Balance actually will be affected dramatically under TPP. And what was really interesting about that visit was the fact that the former USTR, when he uh, uh, toured New Balance, he asked every employee he talked to how long that they worked there. And when you look at, uh, and that was at the uh, Norwich Walk facility, a lot of them were 25, 20, 25, 30 years. It's you know, generation after generation. And what really impressed him was the fact that these were real jobs. 
that they, they were their careers for these individuals. And I think in his own mind, he probably thought that they're only there temporarily until they could find a real job, but realized that you know they really loved what they were doing, and they did a great uh, uh, work uh, uh, as well. And we uh, brought the the current uh, uh, trade ambassador up there uh, to go through the, the New Balance facility, so he can see uh, a firsthand uh, what is going on. Uh, when you look at uh, the fast track uh, legislation, and that's where, where the battle is going to be. Because this administration knows that they do not have fast track legislation, that it's going to be very difficult for them to get uh, TPP uh, uh, through uh, Congress, because that's where the battle is going to be. And when you look at the reason why it's a huge battle, uh, TPP equates to about 40% of the global economy. That is huge. That is huge almost 40% of the global economy. And the only way that this administration knows that they can get something through is through fast track authority. Now, when you say, well, what can you do? Well, the proponents of a fast track will argue that fast track is needed because they cannot have 535 members of Congress negotiating trade deals. But that's nothing uh, further from the truth. Uh, fast track is dangerous, as you heard earlier. It's a dangerous to our democracy. Uh, you know, a, a, as a com uh, country, it eliminates uh, the checks and balances that we currently have with Congress and the administration, uh, and it just delegates all that authority over to uh, the administration. When you look at fast track, uh, it, when it was first given under uh, President Nixon back in 1973, and it dealt mainly with tariffs and, and quotas, uh, but now it has become much more than just tariffs and quotas and we're actually el eliminating Congress's ability uh, to deal with other issues, uh, whether it's uh, the Buy America rules, patent rules, you heard uh, you know, copyright issues, uh, food safety standards, uh, energy policy, environmental policy. So it's actually, uh, you know, we're giving a lot away. Uh, fast track is not needed uh, for trade expansion. In fact, if you look at under President Clinton, he was denied it for six of his eight years as president when he was in office, but he still actually managed uh, to uh, uh, complete, uh, I guess statistics uh, today from my former staffer, uh, complete more than 100 trade and investment uh, uh, packs without fast track authority. So you can do it, I mean, if they're good trade deals. But in fact, if you look at the trade deals that's been passed under fast track, that's actually the most uh, controversial, whether it's uh, uh, NAFTA or WTO, yeah, and those are the ones that actually has caused a huge trade deficit here uh, you know, in, in this country is those that have been negotiated under uh, a fast track uh, uh, authority. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why this administration knows uh, that it's, uh, they're going to do everything in their power to get uh, fast track authority. Uh, we've been very fortunate. Uh, they're supposed to actually have voted on that uh, a little while ago, uh, but they haven't had the votes. Uh, it's my understanding that uh, Senator Hatch announced that uh, within the next couple of weeks they probably will be bringing it forward, uh, you know, for a vote on the Senate side. Uh, hopefully uh, that uh, you know will not happen. Hopefully they will not ha have the votes. And here's an issue when you look at uh, the filibuster. You know uh, what can happen. Uh, and here's what you can do to, particularly for our two senators, is encourage them to do everything they can to filibuster fast track. <clears throat> that, that's where we'll, we'll be able to kill it. Uh, if they're not willing to do that, then they're uh, more likely are in favor of the trade deal. They just wanted uh, uh, an, an excuse to, uh, to say, they, they'll probably say, well, uh, we're against TPP, but we're going to give the administration fat, fast track authority. Well, if they're against TPP, then they shouldn't be voting uh, for, for that fast uh, uh, track uh, authority because once fast track is passed, they cannot filibuster the trade deals. As you heard earlier, they have to have an up or down vote. So if we're going to kill it, it's going to have to be uh, at the fast track uh, you know, uh, authority. Uh, in the House, there's, uh, you know, it's a mixture. There's less, uh, last I heard, less than a dozen Democrats uh, who have come out publicly in favor uh, of fast track most recently. Uh, but there are also, uh, uh, you know, Republicans who have come out against fast track authority. My good friend Walter Jones, uh, who has always been there with us, a uh, Republican, that always constantly have fought uh, these trade deals, but also uh, given any administration a fast track uh, authority. Uh, this is an issue that's not a Republican issue or Democratic issue. 
it's basic philosophy. And I know, uh, you know that's something that we got to push members of Congress and, and U.S. Senate to really focus on what's actually uh, they're voting on. Uh, and uh, there are also businesses who are adamantly uh, opposed to fast track. And so what you got to do is actually tap into the individuals that you know that might be against it or will be harmed by it and get them to get involved in the process. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, New Balance definitely could be affected dramatically because of Vietnam. And, and the fact that we have three New Balance facilities here in the state of Maine that employ anywhere from eight to, uh, to 900 jobs is significant. And that's something that definitely, uh, uh, last time I talked to the New Balance folks, so they've been very adamantly opposed to uh, a TPP and, and Fast Track. And hopefully they'll continue uh, to uh, get a hold of members of Congress from the Maine and really uh, put the pressure on them not to give this administration uh, you know, that authority. When you look at the administration's own job claims uh, that they're claiming when you look at TPP, uh, Washington Post actually called them false. So uh, that, that's another thing. There's going to be a lot of uh, information out there that's going to be totally false uh, f from this administration just so that they can uh, get uh, a fast track uh, authority passed and ultimately uh, TPP passed. Uh, but there's also uh, former administration folks, uh, actually Elizabeth Warren, uh, who worked uh, for this administration, who's uh, got an all out effort to oppose. Uh, uh, the TPP and, and Fast Track, and hopefully we'll be able to move forward. The other area, when you look at uh, some of these issues uh, as it relates to, to fast, uh, uh, fast Track and, and trade, is in 2013, actually, you know, I, I led a bipartisan coalition of over 200, uh, 230 members of Congress, Republicans and Democrats. Together, we actually signed a letter to, to this president urging uh, strong currency manipulation uh, provision in the TPP. Uh, the president uh, actually talked to Congress in February, I believe it was, and made it very clear he was not including anything in TPP as it relates to currency manipulation, which is extremely disappointing for, for a couple of reasons. Number one, we have it in black and white, actually, a letter he sent to Leo Gerard uh, before he got elected to president. In, in plain English, that any trade deal that he signs will have currency manipulation in it, in black and white. And uh, quite frankly, when you look at Panama, Colombia, uh, South Korea, it was not in there. Uh, th this administration made it very, president made it very clear that it's not going to be in, in TPP, which is very disappointing. Because when you look at currency manipulation, as it relates to, for instance, I'll use the automobiles. The effect of currency manipulation being felt when the automobiles, the subsidies provided to Japanese companies for exporting to the United States their vehicles equates to $8,000 a vehicle because of currency manipulation. This has a tremendous impact to our domestic auto industry here in, in the state, in, in the United States. Uh, Toyota, for example, made more in profits last year from currency than Ford made all last year in their worldwide operations. Currency manipulation is huge. And that's uh, uh, another reason why we, you know, we gotta make sure that whatever happens that we uh, you know, have currency manipulation in there. Uh, in Maine alone, ending currency manipulation, uh, according to the statistics that I received today, would result in creating uh, between 9,300 jobs and 24,000 jobs. That is significant. Uh, you know, businesses here in Maine and in the United States can compete with any businesses around the world, even though labor environmental standards are, are not the same. But when you compete against a country, that manipulates, that manipulates that currency, it is extremely difficult uh, to deal with that. So I would encourage you to uh, continue doing what you're doing, uh, uh, getting out there, getting people to talk about uh, Fast Track and, and, uh, and TPP. Uh, encourage uh, our two senators or any uh, of uh, your friends in other neighboring states uh, to filibuster Fast Track Authority if it comes over 
uh, over on the Senate side. Uh, likewise, a new member of Congress, uh, Congressman uh, Poliquin, uh, talked to him about the importance of uh, uh, defeating fast track and what it would mean for companies like New Balance and other companies uh, he here in, in the state of Maine. And uh, continue sending letters and writing letters. Uh, actually, when this meeting uh, started, I got an email from uh, Celeste Drake from the National AFL-CIO. She's actually, they're trying to actually get uh, governors and attorney generals, uh, either current or former attorney generals, former governors, uh, to write a letter uh, opposing a fast track uh, authority. So there's a lot we can do. I mean, the battle's not over. It's going to be a, a long uh, a battle uh, in, th in this regard, and we can't let our, our guard down. We're going to need every vote, uh, both on the House side and, and on the Senate side, uh, to defeat uh, a fast track. And I'm very fortunate, actually, because I was very interested in this. What got me to run for Congress in the first place, as I mentioned. Uh, but actually, my former chief of staff is working. Uh, now uh, in uh, in Washington uh, to actually to help defeat fast track authority uh, Peter Chandler so he's keeping me informed of how how things are going uh, down there in DC and what members that they might need some prodding with uh, you know that I might have some influence on still so uh, so I want to thank all of you for all that all that you're doing really appreciate it once again keep up the great work uh, Cynthia congratulations on uh, on your elections. Uh, uh, I, I wish my, my election went, went that easy. Uh, it, it, it didn't. So, so evidently, uh, Cynthia had these elections on fast track this evening. So, so, so once again, thank you very much. Appreciate it.